a minute, but we'll get going on time to be respectful of all your time as well. There we go. All right, well, welcome everybody. My name is Ryan Hoverson. I'm the assistant city engineer here for Shakopee. And uh, if you're here in the, you're here for the 2018 uh, Sanitary Sewer Lateral Pipe Rehabilitation Program. Uh, city's looking at doing a uh, CIP, a, a public improvement project to line your services. Uh, we've kind of already done a lining of the, uh, the mains in the center of the street. And we just want to protect the investments uh, that we put into kind of updating and maintaining the roads and doing this lining project. So I'm going to hand this off. I'd like to introduce Dave Hutton. Dave is a senior uh, professional engineer for SCH, uh, consultant for the city on this project, kind of a specialized lining project, and we've sought their help for this. Dave's got a few decades of uh, experience in engineering, and some of you may even recognize him. Dave was a former public works director and city engineer for the city of Shakopee as well for a time. Uh, so with that, uh, I'll turn it over to Dave. Uh, one small little thing, if you're here and you're on Davis Court, um, our, no our original notification had uh, Davis Court included on this. You won't be directly impacted, so I can save you a few minutes if you'd like, and uh, you can either pack up or stick around for some fun. So uh, with that, Dave. Thanks, Ryan. I was actually going to bring that up right away, that, that point. Uh, by the way, I was uh, Public Works Director City Engineer from 1988. 19, I got to stay by here, or they won't hear me, so I can't wander around, sorry. <laughs> uh, 1988 to 93, so it's great to be, be back. This is the third year of the city's program to line the lateral services, and you see the map up above, this is what Ryan was talking about. If you receive the notice, which has the blue map, you'll see that the blue area down in Davis Court, Austin Court, was shaded on your invite, and that was done erroneously, and I'll take full responsibility for that. We got a little overzealous with what we thought was gonna be done in this year's project. So what's shown on the screen, is the actual project area this year. So again, if, you, if you're on those two streets, you're welcome to stay. Sewers, exciting stuff. We got a big crowd to hear about sewers. Uh, and at some point, the city may be going in to do your streets. I don't know how far down the road that is. Um, but at this point, it will not be part of this year. You will have to drive through some of the construction, though. The, the equipment that you'll see on the side, you'll be driving through that to get your house because it'll be on 11th Avenue. So, But just to clarify, uh, you will not be part of the sewer lining project this year. So. Uh, the area that's shown in blue is the area we're doing. Um, and what, what the city normally does is they will line the main line sewers uh, one year, and then three, four, five years later, they'll come back and they'll line the services. And I'm going to talk tonight about the services. That's from the main to, towards the house. I got some samples over here that I'll show later. You can come up and touch it. It talks about that. But the bigger pipe in the center of the street, that's what's been lined already. Your smaller service that branches off that is what we're talking about tonight. Everything that we're going to be doing in this project is all uh, robotics. It's through uh, it's uh, through the manholes with little cool little devices that crawl through the sewer and up here in lateral, so there'll be no digging, no excavation. So that's what's neat about it. So I want to explain what you'll be seeing out there. So again, this is the project area right here. Uh, this was the notice that went out. And so what are we going to cover tonight? Uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about the program background. I've already talked a about a little bit about it, but I'm going to go more into it. Uh, we're going to talk about how we're going to rehabilitate or line your pipe uh, from the center of the street, which is where the, the, the big pipe is, to about five feet beyond the curb. That's what's in the public right-of-way. That's what Ryan talked about, protecting the investment. Anything within the public right-of-way, they want to have uh, ensure that the pipe's in good shape. One of the pri primary reasons for doing this is to make sure that that pipe doesn't deteriorate and causes uh, uh, settlements in the street, potholes, but also if there's any inflow coming in from groundwater that gets in uh, in those pipes that creates uh, additional uh, clean water that goes to the treatment plant that doesn't need to be there. And so 
Um, the other piece of that, if the rest of your pipe from where we stop to your house, we're going to explain if you want to do that on your own as part of your cost um, to go all the way to your house with that same program, we'll explain how that works and how you can do that. And then how we're going to communicate with you in the, in the, in the, in the next uh, meetings. So tonight we're going to do the presentation. should take maybe a half hour. Uh, and then uh, if I, I'd ask you to hold questions maybe until the end. Ryan's got a microphone. When we start asking questions, we'll I'll ask you to, to talk in the microphone. But then we'll have an a informal meeting period at 7 where we have the question answers. I don't know if any plumbers are here in the room. We did invite some local plumbers. Uh, we can offer uh, them to talk as well. And then we're going to try to be out here by 7.30. Um, let me see if, I can, if my arrow shows up on the screen. Perfect. So why are we doing this pipe? This is where I got to put on my reading glasses. And I just wanted to clarify that you, the property owner, own, so what, we sh what we're showing here, it's a little complicated. Here's the roadway, little car there. Here's the main sewer pipe that goes up and down the roadway this way. And then from there, your sewer pipe runs to your house. That's what's called a service or a lateral, the lateral line. The right-of-way line, which is the public uh, what the city owns is usually about five feet behind the curb, five to ten feet right in there. That's called the boulevard. And, and whether you, you realize it or not, your property line does not go all the way to the curb. It usually stops us anywhere five, seven feet, depending on the street you're on. So that's what's called the public right-of-way. And so you own the whole thing, though. You're responsible for it, even uh, within this public right-of-way. So Part C is in the public right-of-way of your sewer pipe. And Part D, though, is on private property. That's from the right-of-way to your house. And so uh, if anything breaks in that entire line, all the way in both C and D, you're responsible for repairing it. If you get a sewer backup, you get a collapse line, and you need to dig it up, uh, that's your responsibility. Um, when the city goes in and kind of redoes their streets and makes them, uh, overlays them with new blacktop, that's when you don't want to be digging up pipes and broken water mains and broken sewers. So you want your other infrastructure under the new street to be in good shape. So that's why we're doing these ladder lines. We want, we want the sewer pipe in, uh, that's shown in, in section C here to be in good shape. So that's the reason we're doing it. The main line pipe has been lined. The street has been over, these streets have been overlaid. I don't know, Ryan, how many years ago that was? Uh, just a couple. couple. So you got, good, you got good blacktop. Your main line pipe is in good. The water main is still in good shape. So the only piece of infrastructure that is, is old and, and has the potential to cause problems is that, uh, that lateral within the street. So that's why we're doing this project. What we don't want is this to happen. That's a relative, you know, we, we don't want someone to repair their sewer line uh, in a new street after it's been overlaid. We don't need someone digging up their sewer because you got a collapse, you got a root problem, or some other problem. So, this is what we want to avoid. This is actually some stuff we've uh, uncovered. As we go in there, and uh, I'll show you how we do this when we clean and, and, and uh, take care of the inside of that pipe before we line it with the new. With the new sewer, we find stuff like root ball. You see the root ball on the left. Roots removed in 2015 from phase one. That's a huge ball of roots that was taken out of one of these service pipes. Uh, broken pipes we found in there. And so these are all things we found. We, what we do with the contractor is they clean and televise it before the sewer is lined, and then they clean and televise it afterwards to make sure that the, the work is successful. This is a before. This is a, some pictures of what it looked like before. And then once we line it, here's what your sewer looks like. Nice, clean, brand new. Basically, we're creating a new pipe inside of a pipe. And this new pipe has about a 50-year life, they say. Probably longer, but they, they usually say 50 years. So we're creating a brand new pipe. It's going to be plastic, kind of pl plastic feel. It's more of a hard resin uh, fabric. I, I'm going to, again, show you samples. Uh, but once that thing is hardened and cured out, it looks uh, it's clean. There's no cracks. There's no broke broken pipe, there's no uh, uh, roots coming in there, and uh, looks really nice. So that's what you're going to end up with. So let's go through some of the uh, questions people have. I've done enough of these meetings. Uh, well, I already jumped to come question two. Most people want to know how much it's going to cost me. So we'll, step, we'll do uh, question one first. How much of my pipe will we be, will be rehabilitating? So again, uh, again, a kind of a schematic. Uh, we really want to get everything done. Uh, within the street right away. So if I could go through the, the kind of the letters here. Uh, the Let me get my arrow going here. Dave, on the... Um, yep. Yeah, but it doesn't show up on the TV screen. Oh, okay. See, it fades with those new TVs. That's why I can't. So again, 
Uh, sewer line is in yellow. There's a manhole C. There's a manhole D. Uh, here's the services that are going to the houses, and we show the ones in red are the ones that are going to be lined within the public right of way. This is curb and gutter and pavement. The ones in yellow are the ones that are responsible for you at the conclusion of the project if you want to do something different. So this just kind of shows uh, how that works as you go up and down uh, the, uh, the street. Probably going to be about five feet behind the curb is where we're going to end up with our lining. So this entire piece from the main to about five feet behind the curb will be completely lined and new as I showed on that picture uh, before. And you can see the five foot requirement right about here. Um, the robots that are used to do this go in through manhole C and they work their, or manhole D either way, but they'll go and say this manhole C and they work their way down. These robots work their way down the main line. They turn and they take care of this one and then they come back out and then they go back down and do this one and then they go back and they probably come in this manhole and do this one. So the robots are always working through the manholes. They never are above ground. You'll see cables above ground because they have to have cables connecting things. You'll see trucks parked in front of the manholes, but there will be no excavations. You also have your water main next to it and your water service. We're not going to touch those at all. Those are, those are not as deep. Your sewer is the deepest pipe going in your house. Seven, eight, nine, probably nine feet deep. Your water is probably seven feet deep under the ground. And so your water is all going to be above that. So there'll be no conflicts with your water main as we move, move on this project. I know it's a little complicated drawing, but trying to illustrate how we do this. How much will it cost me? That's always the question that I always got when I was city engineer. Whoops, I skipped over that one. Uh, the, the cost is zero, actually. The city is not doing any assessments on this to the direct property owners. Uh, but of course, obviously the city doesn't have a printing press in the basement printing money, but it's part of your sewer fund that you pay with your sewer rates. So that's been, you've been paying into those rates for years and years and years. So they're doing this project uh, using the existing sewer rates. There'll be no additional cost directly to the property owners with this project. One of the reasons they do that is when they do, uh, when they dig up a street and fix a new sewer, uh, so with a dig dig up project, you see when they reconstruct roads, they usually give a, the property owners a new sewer out to the five feet beyond the right of way anyways as part of that project. So they felt it was equitable where this was milling over, right, let's make sure that that sewer is in good shape all the way to five feet beyond the property line. So no cost to the property owners, that's the good news. Now you can all get up and leave, right? <laughs> Does the city need my permission to do this work? Uh, technically, no. It's all on public right away, and so they, does not, uh, they do not need your permission. Um, I don't know if you got an opt-out program. We will allow an opt-out on this. Uh, that's something that we'd ask you if, if you choose. We don't want you touching our sewer service. Maybe you have a, a new pipe and you like yeah. what you have. We can leave it alone, but it's something that we'd like you to, uh, I think right. we have a form that we'd like you yep. to sign just to say, I've, I've officially opted out of this. Again, you own, you own the pipe, the city is lining it because they want to protect their street infrastructure above the pipe, but you do have that option, you would have to sign a form to opt out. And if we don't hear from you, we're going to assume you're in the program. Uh, will the city need a permit? Uh, nope, there's no permits required for any of this work. It's just part of normal maintenance costs by the city. When will the city do the work? Uh, let me go over to schedule. We have, uh, we're working right now on finishing the bidding documents. We do have to publicly bid this uh, to get competitive bids. There's, there's about three or four contractors around the, the country that do this. It's a specialized piece of equipment with these robots. And so we don't have, you know, 20 contractors in Minnesota, but there's lots of national contracts, not lots, there's three or four. We're gonna advertise in May get bids uh, and award a contract in June and hopefully start work in mid to late June. Uh, we usually give them a good uh, five or six months to complete it. Uh, again, they come from out of state. They may not show up right away after they get their contract. They might show up a month later, depending on where they're working in other parts of the country, um, but they will be done by November 2nd. Uh, we usually have a two weeks after that for final completion. That's really to get the, the paperwork needed to close out the project and make sure things are all uh, approved, we review te television tapes and all that uh, of, the, of the sewer work. Um, we have a two-year requirement where they have a two-year warrant, uh, they have to do a, a complete televising of your services two years after the project is done. That's a warranty period. We retain money for two years. They will come back and do their televising work uh, two years later to get that last 
that last check. So just for the record, they're gonna televise this, your sewer pipe three times. Once before they do the work, just to see how bad it is and document where the, where the cracks and the roots and all that are and, and um, the deformities in your pipe. They'll televise it a second time after it's been lined. Two years later, they'll televise it a third time. All of those televising tapes are on file at the city hall and anybody can come and look at the tape of your particular service anytime you want. Is that correct, Ryan? That is correct. Uh, so yep. they'll, be st st they'll be filed here uh, by property address within the engineering department. Anytime you want to come look at the televising of your service, you can do that. So that's our schedule. We're getting ready, like I said, to go off for bids here mm, in May and uh, get contractor on board. How will we do it? Well, this is a very interesting process. Um, I'm going to kind of go sh go through it, and I got some little videos. This this equipment and products are generally uh, invented over in Europe. The German the Germans do most of this work to start with. Europe has been doing this for years. It gravitates towards Canada and the United States later, and uh, the United States is usually the last one to really get into it. Probably because we have wider streets and wider lots and it's easy to dig up sewers. You think about Europe, very narrow streets, uh, lots of you know, tight areas and so they can't dig up their streets. So we're doing what's called a trenchless method, okay? A trenchless method and we're using what's called a cured in place pipe, C-I-P-P. -P. So we're doing a cured in place pipe by the blind shot method. I know it's a lot of technical phrases, but really we're gonna access the sewers with robots as I explained through the, through the manholes, we'll be inserting a f uh, kind of a felt pad into the into the liner that's got a resin in it. Once that's in there and inflated, they put hot water in it that actually bakes the, the pipe resin so it's hard and then it, you got a hard pipe inside the pipe. So uh, the resin is cured, the pipe hardens after a couple hours. We then televise it to make sure it looks good and it's all, all ready to go back in service. I'm gonna show you some videos on how this works, some animation videos that gives you a better idea of what you'll see out there. But here's the seven steps. You clean and televise and measure how long they gotta make the liner. Then you cut the liner to, to the proper length. Then you wet it out. What that means, you're putting the resin on top of the, you're putting the glue or the resin inside the fabric and you're rolling it up into a little ball so it'll fit into the manhole. And you, you load it into this packer, which is what I'm talking about. They kind of crush it all together, load it up into this packer that it'll fit down the manhole. Then you send the packer through the manhole, get it in shape, so it's lined up with your pipe. That's all done with joysticks and a little television camera in the truck. And then they, and then they blow it into your, into your pipe, uh, cure it with steam, let it cool down, remove everything, and then they televise it again to make sure it looks good. So that's the process. They could normally do, I know Rick was out here last year or a couple years ago, two or three a day normally, maybe more. Okay, so they'll be work. you know, it depends on how close they are together, how far they gotta go into each, each house, but you can probably expect three to five of these a day. So let's take a look at, at these steps. Um, so the first one is, this is how they're preparing the liner before they put it into the sewer pipe. So what they're doing is mix, mixing the chemicals. This is the resin that they're gonna use. They're gonna mix this resin together put it inside the liner. There's the liner right there. They're going to put this in there. It's the glue that's going to eventually harden. So they fill it full of that resin and then they run it through this kind of squeegee machine to kind of flatten it out. And then they invert it and they're putting it inside the packer. So now we got that soft resin, the soft fabric and the glue all put together into the packer. Here comes the really cool part. Sorry if I get excited about this. So there we are, they're going, they've already dropped it in the manhole. They're going down the main line. They get to your pipe. Whoop, they went too far, so they, they kind of pull it back and forth so they get it lined up perfectly with your service. And now they're ready to go. Uh, I didn't show the cleaning and cutting yet of the, I, I didn't have a video of the cleaning. So there's also a video that shows the cleaning. They cut all the roots and all that before they actually do it. So now they just position the packer, which are where they want it. And there you can see they're blowing the liner now into your serve line. You can see the roots that have been cut already, so that pipe is completely cleaned and ready for this, for this liner. They've got it in there. 
ready to go. Now they heat it up with either steam or hot water uh, to a certain temperature, and that's what cures it out. Some contractors don't use steam and hot water. They use what's called an ambient cure. It's just a chemical reaction, so I'm not sure. We have had one contractor to use steam cure and one contractor that's used an ambient cure. So. So now that, that's what's left in place. You got a little bit of a liner in the main line there. That blue circle is, has been lined inside the main line and then your service line has also been lined. They send the TV camera in with a little robot and the TV camera will then go in and inspect everything to make sure it, it's good. There's no cracks, there's no uh, sags, there's no bubbles and the city would then accept that it looks good. Those roots that have been cut off will not re-enter the pipe because that pipe is hard as a, as a brand new PVC pipe and unless a crack develops in that pipe, those roots will not gravitate into that, into that new liner. So that's kind of that's kind of the process. It's all, again all through manholes and little robots that come in and take care of this. Um, so let's just go through here some final catch-up questions. Uh, how much will it disrupt my life? Oh, I don't remember that one. Uh, there'll be a few things. We're going to have no parking out there. Uh, you know when they're working on your block. Again, now they're going to do three to five services a day. Uh, so they're not going to have no parking over the entire neighborhood. So they'll have no parking when they're working in that block. Um, when they're working on your lateral, it will completely block the lateral for about four to six hours. Okay, they have to do that because they got to TV it. Uh, they they have to uh, install the liner. It says possibly install a clean out. I'll come back to that. Um, and then you will be notified at least 24 hours ahead of time that they're going to block your sewer. They'll be notified by a door hanger. Uh, also on the city's website, uh, you know, keep an eye on the progress of the work out there. We'll have a city inspector. Rick will be out there. Um, I'm assuming Rick will be out there. We'll have business cards. So you can always check when you're going to be there. When they're doing your lateral, you know, you can't use your sewer or water. You know, if you, if you use your water, it goes down the drain and goes out the pipe. And so you're required to not use, use your utilities for four to six hours. That's why we want you to know about it. We'll give you 24 hour notice. So you can skip your wash day, make it a different, you know, make it the next day and, and you know when you can cook and clean and all that. They normally don't start that early in the morning. Usually people are gone to work before they really get rolling on stuff, you know, but you, again, you'll be notified about it. Um, I mentioned possibly install a clean out. Uh, clean out is a second hole. Uh, we normally don't need to do a clean out. As you saw by the video, they can line your service all from the manhole and pull everything back out. But in some cases, certain situations, if they can't do that, they got to drill down a second hole and they basically pull the liner and equipment through and come out the second hole in your yard. It's called a clean out. Uh, it's just a plastic pipe that gets placed down uh, on the end of that lateral and then there'll be a cap on it. So in your grass, there'll be a, a pipe with a cap on it. That's what's called a clean out. So in, uh, on certain occasions, it's not very often, a clean out will need to be installed. It really depends on the condition of your lateral and whether they can get through it with just the one, with the one tool coming through the manhole. Uh, we, don't, we don't end up doing very many laterals on this program at all. I don't even know if we did any in 2016. Cleanouts, clean outs, I meant. Uh, do we do any clean outs? Yeah, no. Nope. We actually penalize the contractor if they have to do a clean out. The city doesn't want clean outs on the, uh, in the middle of the service lateral. Um, you guys don't want clean outs when you're mowing your grass, you have to mow around it, so we got a penalty in the contract whenever they have to do a clean out. It really happens if they have a problem with some of their equipment more that they have to do a clean out. Is that something that they would be notified to us beforehand if they do have to do a clean out? The question was for the for the camera was is that something you would get notified of? Yeah, we would we will let you know that they're having problems, we're gonna have to do a clean out. Yep, absolutely. The whole program is geared. The reason we call it a blind shot method is you don't need a clean out. It's not required. We don't want them. And so the whole program and, and uh, the last uh, phase two, there was 140 some homes they did. And what would you say, Rick, no clean outs? Okay. Okay. So, so phase one, 137 homes, they had one clean out. Phase two was 140 homes, they didn't have any clean out. So the chances of a clean out having to happen aren't, aren't very good. A um, couple other things that you'll notice, again, uh, I mentioned during this time when your uh, lateral is being worked on, uh, you know, don't 
flush the toilet, take showers, use the dishwasher, use the washing machine, things like that. Um, your traps need to be full of water. We'll explain that to you and your, you know, put, put your traps full in your sinks. Uh, that just keeps odors. You know, there is an odor to this process. I'm going to let you know that. If you're out in the street when you're doing it, you'll smell the odor. And if, and if you don't keep your traps full of water, your sink traps, you might smell the odor. Um, so just keep your windows open. But by keeping your traps full of water, um, that will prevent that. Uh, the other thing about the traps is when they do a steam curing uh, of the lateral, the steam actually vents through your house. And I'll show you a picture. Well, actually, I'm going to do that right now. The steam uh, will come through your house and out through the chimney. It's not harmful, um, but again, you'll you can see the steam coming out there. That's from uh, curing of that liner. So that's the other thing. You, and the inspector will make sure, come in, the, the contract will come in and look at your traps, make sure everything looks good. It doesn't hurt anything. It usually doesn't uh, harm anything in the house. Might get a little humid in there if you're home, you know, because of the steam. Might might be uh, uh, higher humidity, but generally there's no problems. Now only some contractors, I said, use steam cure, and other contractors don't use steam cure. So if uh, you know last year phase two, uh, they didn't, or 2016 phase two, they didn't use steam cure. So it just depends on which contractor we get. Um, I think go ahead. we could coordinate with you and, uh, you know, if, if they're doing the steam, I think they may just want to contact you and say, Hey, we're going to be doing this, fill your, you know, fill your traps and such, uh, ahead of time. And then they could probably still do the process without necessarily needing to verify or go in your home. They, they tend to work a couple days ahead of time, letting you know they're going to be coming by and they usually work you know, later in the evening because they want to, they're, they're coming up from, from some other, you know, state. So they'll, they'll work seven to seven or whatever. Uh, they'll work out a couple days ahead of time we're talking to you that they're coming to your house, you know, the, the day after next and, and find out if you'll be home and let them know what's going on. So, yep. Um, I think I kind of went over this. I just, I just wanted to mention again that the no clean outs are necessary. Um, and, and if the clean out is installed, it would generally be right at the end of where they're doing their work, you know, right in here. Um, but again, we're not, we're not anticipating any clean outs and don't plan on, on doing that. Yes. Well, there probably is. There could be a problem. Uh, that's that's again uh, one of the question was how do we know there's not a problem in the? We generally only. <laughs> yeah. With with this, so the city in doing this is using, uh, you know, like he alluded to that sanitary trunk fund that you guys have all been kind of contributing with your utility bills. Um, you also pay via taxes and w for those street improvements. So we're really looking at protecting that street portion. Um, to go beyond, I mean, it's something that for, for past years, future years, we could spec it in. Uh, we're trying to keep costs down on this project and utilize that fund for certain benefits. Some people have newer pipes, have no use for it. Others probably do. It's something that when we come in, uh, we could put you in, ch in contact with the contractor and if they again we're doing a public bid so we don't even know who that contractor is at this point but if they wanted to maybe they can offer that service to you for a slightly a nominal fee to to continue right. that to go beyond the, go beyond yep. the city yep. portion and and i'm going to talk about that in a minute if you want to go from from this point the rest of the way to your house uh, I, i'm going to go through the process you need to do to, to do that and and, and ryan's right you can certainly con uh, talk to the contractor that's out on site directly. If they want to do it um, for you, they, they could, but you still have to go through a process, which I'm going to go through in a minute. Yeah. If we find a local plumber as well that might be interested in doing this for multiple residents, there's certainly some power in numbers and getting reasonable prices to investigate the rest of that for you as well. So that's something that we could try and help coordinate with you guys if that's something that's of interest to everybody.
There, it, I, I don't want to promise to anybody at this moment that that is an option. It, it is a possible scenario that could play out. If we get a favorable contractor that wants to make additional money, absolutely, he may you know, op, you know, offer that to everybody. Um, same thing happens when we do our street reconstructions. We only go so far. Some contractors will look at you and say, I want nothing to do with that. They have to collect checks or money from individual contractors. Liability is also different than if they're working in the city portion versus a homeowner's. So some contractors will look at us and just explain, we, we don't want that extra additional risk or responsibility. So some may just bow out. It's possible, but I, I just don't want to overpromise to you because our contractor may look at us and say, we don't right. want to do any of that. And the You know what? Money, money speaks. <laughs> you might so do this. You <laughs> might do it. Yeah. You offer him you know, a million bucks, and I guarantee he'll do it. Rick, so Rick, it, Rick, it just kind of depends. Rick has a comment here. One thing with this technology, like D David mentioned, is the blind shot. They are limited to the length of service that they can install via the blind shot method. So while you, to go from that additional distance where we'd end up behind the curb, the rest of the distance to the house, it may not be possible with that technology. Yep. They'd have to do a different method, go up to the house, put a clean out in and go back right. and tie in to where we and have been. The, so the, And again, the primary motive for this program is to is to make sure all the pipes within the street right away are in good shape so they don't have any, you know, so they're protecting their street. Um, it's not necessarily to give you a brand new service all the way to your house. Again, we're gonna give you uh, information if you want to go that way and, and go through the permit process and talk to plumbers and you can certainly do that you can certainly talk to our contractor once we get them on board um, but that would have to be a separate uh, arrangement between you and the contractor I know this lady had a question yeah. um, I think it's on it's, it's on. on yep okay there's many homeowners on I'm on from Merritt core area and on Merritt Street that are houses that are 40 years old and Oftentimes the lines are set at a certain grade to go down. Mm -hmm. I've experienced some problems where my line has gone up and down and the grade isn't as acute as it should be. And I have experienced um, backup in my home, okay? So now I'm tentatively looking at the possibility that if this was inappropriately or incorrectly done initially on my then new home 40 years ago, um, is there, who, de who determines if I have to replace the whole line, if it can be straightened out, where is it at right now, how do I even plan on cost if I'm looking at something yeah. like that? So, uh, as we alluded to, you own that service pipe, and that's really, it's your decision on if and when you do anything. Uh, really, all of this kind of boils down to if you're having problems, um, if you've been kind of foaming or cutting roots over the years, those issues aren't going to go away. It's going to continue to happen. If you know that you've had sags and potential backups, it, it, it's not going to go away. That's your choice on whether you do it with this or at the same time as this pro uh, project. Save for it and do it in five years or ten years. Uh, it, it, that's really a personal decision on when you want to, to do that. Um, you know, there's, there may be benefit and that our contractor is here, uh, that they could kind of help you with that. It'll kind of re-smooth out the pipe, but it's not going to take, if you have sags or dips right. in there, it won't take those out. It'll smooth the pipe so that if there's any corrosion or blockages or buildups in your pipe, it'll clean those and re-smooth the pipe, but that would be about it. Yeah. Um, so this isn't a cure-all for every single problem that's out there. Sometimes uh, you can have pipes that have separated and have offset joints. We may not be able to fix something like that. That's where a clean-out might be necessary. Uh, a lot of times uh, a developer came through, put the sewer main in the streets, but your houses weren't necessarily built at the exact same time. So same thing, sometimes the pipes change in that 5, 10, 15 feet behind the curb when your home builder took off. So we may have cast iron pipe out in the street and it might be clay or orangeburg beyond that. And so those, 
everybody's got a different pipe. It's, it's yours. It's your personal decision on that. I hope that answers your question. The, this deck. Who determines whether I need a new line or not? You as a homeowner. You do. You do. If you've if had you, problems with it and you right. want to protect your basement, your low floor, you don't want sewer backups, then that's your decision as yeah. a homeowner. Why are you getting that in the house if this is the first time you're doing it? Gen generally, most sanitary sewer services, you don't necessarily don't have, to have to clean out until you start recognizing that maybe there's a blockage. If, if you're cooking with grease all the time or you had roots, roots or something like that, then maybe you would start experiencing that. Uh, that's when it becomes an issue. Yeah. Or just earth settling and shifting pipes sometimes yeah. could be enough to do that too. So nobody notifies you and tells you have an issue. You're going to see a puddle at, uh, in a floor drain in your lowest point of your sewer in your yeah. house. If, if there are roots in your, uh, in your pipeline now, the old pipeline, do you have to cut those out before the sleeve goes in there or can it just go in? Yeah, no, we cut them all completely in the part that we're lining. No, no, from, my, no. from there to my house, I'm asking. So you do have a couple of options in mm -hmm. this, and I will say this. Again, our contractor might want to make additional money while they're here and might appease everybody and do all of your services at your expense on a private contract. They may say no. Uh, there's multiple plumbers, and, and this particular product um, cost per foot probably isn't exactly the cheapest option. It, you can sometimes open cut and actually dig up your front yard as well for cheaper. But this, because we have that infrastructure, that, that street and such over the top, they're, they're close. I mean, one's not twice as expensive or something like that. But um, you may have other options just to replace the whole thing via digging. And that may be a better option. We'll be taking it from the center of the street to about 5, 10 feet behind the curb. And then it's yours from there. Yeah, our yeah. section, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And I thought I had a video that showed that, but apparently I didn't. We, we cut all those roots, and then they'll televise and make sure it's clean before that liner yeah. comes in. Yep. Yeah, it, it, it doesn't matter. That's still a city main. Mm -hmm. Yep. 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 If, if you're having root problems, if you suspect that that's causing the, if that's, if that if that's what you suspect is causing the backup, rotor rooters is an option. There's plenty of uh, products out there, but rotor can you can you rotor root your line from your house all the way to the main after we do this project? Yes, you can. There won't it won't it won't be necessary in the area that we've lined, but rotor rooters probably not going to know how far they're going with their tools if they're coming in through your basement. Uh, but yeah, you can line all the way till you get to the main, or you can uh, rotor root and cut. Yeah. If you're having backup problems, yeah, that's when I would do it. That's a good practice as a homeowner. Do yep. you have any idea what the cost for the first or for foot or what the homeowner would be looking yep. at? Let me go through the. We've had a lot of questions on how to do your portion of the of the pipe. Let's go through the process, uh, the procedures. Um, let's see here. Can I reoblate the rest of my pipe all the way else? Yes. So here's some questions that I'm going to talk about right now. Well, I need a permit. When can I do the work? What methods? How much will it cost me? Things like that. So let's just start. So yes, you can do your own. Uh, you can you can do your own. Um, uh, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm getting I'm getting ahead of myself here. Uh, will I need a permit to do this work? The answer is yes. Uh, there's the city of Shakopee permit. I don't know, Ryan, you issue those or through the building permit The office. building department um, would do any kind of connections. When you do your uh, a repair or replacement of your private sanitary service line, 
That's a sewer and water permit through right. the city. You can come right down here and get it at the front window. We also have an e-permitting site, so you can actually obtain all of your permits online now. And, and you don't have, look at the options that they give you here. Open cut, that means someone has a backhoe and they dig up your service from your house all the way out to the property line, uh, the right of line. You can do pipe bursting. That's the method where they, they actually create a new pipe inside. Slip lining is another method. CIPP is what we're doing. This is where you put in a, a fabric pipe and it hardens. Uh, there are plumbers that do different ones of these methods if you talk to plumbers. And so you're not required to do any one method. You can do whatever method you want, get maybe several prices. If you want to take care of your lateral from the house out to the street, you'd have to get a permit and then talk to plumbers and get some uh, um, prices. And this, to clarify, would be a permit that your licensed plumber would take out right. that does the work for you. Uh, when can I do this work? You can, if you want to do this work, you're going to have to uh, probably wait uh, until after the city has completed their work on your line from the street to the house, so I, or from the street to the right-of-way line. I talked about uh, the city starting in late June, working you know several months, so once they get past your house and you're done, then you can start looking at doing your part of the lateral line from there. So we, we don't want you to do it before they do their work. And so I can't give you an exact date, I can just say any time after July through October, once they get past your house, you can then take out a permit and do the rest of it. Like Ryan said, feel free to talk to the contractor and see if they'll use the same method for your uh, lateral while they're out there. Maybe they will, maybe they won't. A lot of these contractors, again, they come from out of state. They want to get productivity. They got 144 of these to get done in six months, and they don't really want to slow down by doing uh, extra work. So they may not be interested, um, but it doesn't hurt to ask. What methods can or can't I use? Again, I, I kind of went over that. You can use basically any method you want. Um, and you see some notes uh, on the bottom. I, I can barely read them, but there's certain requirements for what type of pipe you can use for slip lining, uh, what kind of uh, televising uh, reports you got to turn in, uh, DVD of the, of the pipe, uh, some other conditions here. So you can. Uh, you can give this form to your plumber, and, and as long as they comply with those conditions, you can use any method you want. Can you just mention if we're doing schematic only rotary, or regular maintenance, no. like a rotor router jetting, foaming, no. No, no permit is required for that. Only if you're going to replace or rehabilitate your line, your service line. Uh, who can do the work? Um, any licensed plumber uh, can do the work, uh, and the reason it's got to be a licensed plumber is because when you get outside of the public right-of-way, the plumbing code prevails. When you're in the public right-of-way, there's a different code that pertains. Contractors that work on sewer and water mains in the street don't need to be licensed plumbers. You know, they're basically digging up with backhoe and, and using, you know, uh, so they don't have as tight a requirements. But once you start going to your house from the right-of-way line to your house, now the state plumbing code uh, dictates what they do, and that's why a, a licensed plumber is required. I don't think any are here tonight. We did invite some local plum plumbers. There is a list of probably licensed plumbers at City Hall that you can talk to, uh, and they can do the work. That's the other reason the, uh, the, the primary contractor may not do the work. They may or may not have a licensed plumber. I don't know if they do on their staff. Rick, do you know if they did last year? Yeah, so that's just another thing why they may choose not to do your 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 end of the of the service. How much will it cost me? Well, that's a that's a sixty four thousand dollar question. Uh, the cost it really varies on. I'm going to say between three and eight thousand dollars. That's a big number, but that's you know somewhere in there. It depends on how long. You know, in cul-de-sacs, the services are longer because your house is maybe farther away from the street, uh, and it just depends on how far your house is set back. Um, which method makes a, makes a, makes an argument? Uh, dig and dig and replace might be a little cheaper for contractors that do that all the time. Local local contractors versus uh, lining it like we're doing now that might be more expensive. Um, Ryan There's mentioned volume pricing. If if four or five of you on the same block get the same plumber, you'll probably get a cheaper rate. For all of you, so the the, the rate ranges from you know three to eight thousand dollars. We've had some contractors on street reconstruction projects as well that um, will just replace the pipe for you, 
and they choose, they say, we don't want to do any amount of restoration. So you put your sod back or hire somebody else. So it really just depends the level, the extent of how much you do. But Dave is right, uh, an open cut, anywhere 3,000. Uh, some of these linings probably in that five, six, seven, right. and, and it really depends on length. It also, I mean, overstory trees, if you have concrete steps and landscaping over the top of some of this stuff, you could, you could imagine your expenses climb. So that's why he said that's the $64,000 question. And I know there are plumbers in the Twin Cities area that do the, the pipe bursting or the slip lining. They may not do this cured in place lining, which is kind of special, but they do these other linings because there's lots of homeowners that have retaining walls or big trees in their front yard and to dig and replace that service could be very disruptive to their landscaping or whatever. So, um, you know, I know of a, a handful of plumbers that do other methods that are not dig up and replace. So you just gotta shop around and, and talk to some plumbers, get them out there to look at it. And again, if a whole block goes together and wants to do something, you'll get some volume pricing. I don't have that readily available for you. Um, we'll discuss and, and maybe we can make that available either via the city website. Uh, we do have that e-notification tool that we can send you information and newsletters as well. So, uh, the, one, the one thing I'll say is that the city never really wants to look like we are preferring one plumber or one business owner over another. So um, we kind of struggle with making recommendations to people because we really do want to show that we're impartial, that you can choose as, as you see fit, but um, we could probably put together a list of kind of um, at least some ideas with certain recommendation of, you know, get multiple prices and vet them against each other so that you get the best service and the best price. Uh, we could probably get that. I'd for have you. to look, yeah. Yep. Yep. Yep, for sure. We, we'll, uh, we'll discuss and we'll, we'll look yeah. at uh, yeah. pr probably providing some kind of list. <laughs> yep. We do require the contractor that does your service, if you're hiring someone, that they have to provide the city a televising uh, tape of what they're doing for their work to, uh, to sign off on it. So they usually turn in a DVD uh, that will indicate uh, how the pipe looks when it's done. The engineering department building inspector will review that tape to make sure it looks good and give final approval. Um, they, they look for the same things we look for, smooth wall pipe, uh, not a lot of ponding water, things are falling, not a lot of cracks. You know, they did a good job. They didn't just put something in there and break it on the way in or on the way out or whatever. So uh, they are required to turn in a televising tape of their work when they're done. And on Probably not dig and replace. Well, so on a uh, on this particular project, they'll be televising your service for you before and after, so that you can see those and and you can review those. We'll have those tapes available. Sit you down at a computer. You can certainly take a look at those. Um, I think on that permit where there was some small text there, it said if you had a new plumber come in, they want them to install it. And I, I saw something about a DVD tape. So that must be in that plumbing code that our building department also wants. Yeah, um, it's right a television here. record to show. Yep. And that's pretty standard industry now. When we do our street reconstruction projects, we televise all those main lines as well after they're installed. Just to look for deflections in the pipe, anything where maybe the pipe got crushed or a joint is already separated prior to paving the brand new road over the top of it, dig it up and fix it. So uh, it's a cheap insurance to make sure that that pipe was installed properly, backfilled properly, and that it didn't get crushed during the process. I, I do want to call your attention, it's hard to read, so I'll read it to you, notes three and four there. If we've done your sewer service through our cured in place method uh, before you do yours uh, lateral, uh, you must overlap the liner by one foot with whatever you're doing. So there's an overlap required. Okay, so that is a requirement, that's uh, note three on this form, that's uh, advising your plumber that it has to overlap, that way there's no gaps between the two projects or the two sections of lateral. If it has not been done yet, if we haven't gone to your neighborhood, and this is what apply to some people that maybe aren't part of this year's program, then you must stop uh, one foot away from the center of the, the, the main line pipe. You gotta stop one foot away. And the reason for that is, is when they come in and line the main line and they'll do what's called a shorty or whatever, they'll, they'll bring in a short service to, to connect that. They don't wanna have to, or 
I should back up. They don't want you to break into the, the uh, to go too long into their main pipe or you'll cause an obstruction in their main pipe. And so that's the main reason they don't want you to go all the way to the main pipe. They want you to start a, a foot short and so they don't create an obstruction. Because there has been cases where private plumbers have lined a lateral from a house all the way to the street and they run that thing right through and it goes all the way uh, through the wall of the main pipe and creates a, a very big obstruction and now you can see that the main sewer line is getting plugged and backing up in manholes. So they want you to stop a foot short of that if they haven't gone to your house. So that's the requirements. You, you quoted uh, $3,000 to $8,000 cost. And the 3000 you talked about digging up your uh, lawn and doing it that way. Is the $8,000, is that the one that that's going in now? Is, would that cost us that much? Not, not necessarily. I think that when we say three to eight thousand, it's just giving you, I think, probably like a ninety percent range of you're going to fall within that window. Uh, that eight thousand could be if it's, I mean, if it's underneath your concrete driveway. Imagine the expense to replace a concrete driveway up to the house. Is this an expensive process for us to use in our personal? The lining itself might be. The, Four, five thousand. The, the last two years, it's been around four thousand dollars a house to do the part we're doing. Yeah. Yep. Yep. And the other part of that range of costs, sir, is the length of your of your of your lateral. Some houses are further back, and so it really is a function of how long they got to go, as well as the type of method. So, um, but yeah, this program has been running around four thousand dollars a lateral the last two years. Future communications websites. Uh, the website has the program on there. Right now, Rand? Yep, the city on all of our street projects, we like to do a weekly to bi-weekly update, kind of just to give you some progress, what's happening on the project. Have emergency contact information, your project engineer's information on there. Uh, so absolutely check out the city's website. That's a great source for information. Yep, and not everybody does. So on something like that, we of, of course, as you walked in, there's business cards right here for you. Uh, at any point in time, you can feel free to reach out to any one of us. Give us a call. We're, he we're here to serve you guys. So if there's questions, concerns, call us. And, mm -hmm. and uh, that's why we're doing this meeting tonight. Um, when we do have the, uh, where we're going to do your service, we talked about we'll put a door, a flyer on your door, um, kind of a notice letting you know that this is coming. And at any point in time, just give us a holler and, and we'll, we'll talk to you as well. And the city is... Uh, the question was about working hours. City of Shakopee working hours for contractors is 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. Uh, we'll allow them to go past 7 a.m. Excuse me, 7 a.m. to 9 p.m. Uh, we will allow under emergency circumstances to go beyond that 9 p.m. <coughs> Typically, with our contracts, we look at 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Uh, Shakopee's working hours for contractors are 9 p.m. or 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. on Saturdays with no work on Sundays or holidays. And that's yeah. by city council ordinance. And, and that's something that even us, we have to go to council for approval to do anything outside of those working hours. And, and once we get a contractor on board, we'll know exactly what they're proposing for a work schedule, you know. Okay. Some, yeah. Yep. Yeah, one, when we know who our contractor is, We'll send out one newsletter to everybody, kind of let you guys know who our contractor is, contact information for them, some frequently asked questions, uh, just another round of communication, opportunity for you guys to respond, ask questions, uh, provide some information to you. Correct. So if we do the old, have our personal lateral done, and we do the liner, does the city allow them to come in through the main, through So if, uh, if a contractor wants to come in through our public mains, we would permit that. Uh, there, there may be the need for an additional right-of-way permit since they're going to have construction equipment uh, parked on the street. Uh, so there would be just probably the plumbing permit and a right-of-way permit to do that work. But that is an option that they could come through the main if they so choose. Yep. Yep. It, and that's dependent upon the technical abilities. Yep. For those of you that want email updates, there is a the procedure on the on the website where you can actually sign up for email notifications. It's it's simple. I have actually signed up for it, so I'm getting all these notifications. But um, email address, things like that, um, verification code, and um, that's it. You'll get emails on the program. Question back there.
August, September, we've got the air on, the water goes down the drain. So the, how do we prevent that? Turn off the air? Uh, so typically, you mean air shouldn't be involved. Yeah, you're, uh, most air, or air conditioners, the condensers are outside. Yeah. So very rarely is an air conditioner plumbed in through your house. So that shouldn't be an issue. Yep. Mine goes right down the drain. If you have a window unit, it drips right off the back. If you have um, another one, uh, most of them have a condenser that sits outside and it just drains yeah. right at the foot of it. So you may have a unique situation. I think some of the internal ones that you can buy, like a box one now, maybe does have that kind of drain. Or some, some of the window ones, they have like a drip hose. We can, we can be notified so we can like go out of town or something. Yeah, the day yeah you're, you're going to get on. notified the night before of, okay. of yeah. us doing this work. So you have that opportunity <laughs> just to escape. Go, to, yep. go enjoy Valley Fair or Canterbury for a day or something I, or get I, out of town. I, I don't think you have to shut your air off, though. I don't think that's necessary. A, a little bit of a dripping down the drain isn't going isn't gonna to prohibit this work. But we wouldn't want you doing loads and loads of laundry and flushing toilets and taking baths all in that right. window of construction. Yeah, we, we can't, uh, through this process, there will be a little bit, and it's, it's not going to shut us down. Right. But we just, we're asking you that any significant that amounts of water, deliberate water, is just avoided during those four to six hours. Yeah, water softeners are one of those if you have it. Most people have those program. I think they recharge overnight but those do actually waste a lot of water in the process of softening. So if that is something that you have it programmed for that Tuesday at 2 p.m. and we're yeah. doing the work, we'd appreciate your cooperation yep. in, in shutting that off. Yep. That's, that's a good point. Yep. Yes. So the question is, can we assess if you have a, an outside contractor or even our contractor do the work on your private property, can we assess you and put it on your taxes? The answer on this is no. Uh, the city doesn't want to get into, uh, there's, again, there's liability issues because you would be hiring our contractor. We would need right of entry agreements. We would need you to waive the appeal and assessment process because there's public there's certain meeting requirements and statutory requirements for us to do that assessment, and we aren't doing that with this yeah, project. Yeah. So the, the short answer is no, we wouldn't assess this. So that's something that uh, would be your responsibility for financing outside of this project. Correct. Uh, so the question there is what is the city's liability or the city's contractor's liability if somehow they damage your portion of the pipe beyond our project area? And the answer to that is anything that we're affecting, we'll take care of. Yep. So we have provisions in our contract and the specifications that if they damage that pipe, whether it's in the street or beyond that, uh, then they're, they're going to be responsible yep. via the contract to take care of that. Yep. And we also write it hold harmless against the city. So this contractor is doing the work. Uh, so it doesn't cost the city anything additional if yeah. our contractor, for some reason, uh, creates yeah. hardship or an error on, on their behalf. It would be their expense. And I also mentioned a two-year warranty period where we can make them come back two years later and we re-televise just to see that there's been no deterioration of your piece of the pipe over the two years. So we make sure everything is, is okay before we release the contractor. Yeah. Uh, the question was, is there any need for them to come into, our, into your house? And I, I believe the answer is no. Rick, can you verify that? D almost never do we need to go into the home. Uh, it might be if we had some conflict. I think the big thing there was to uh, just to notify you guys so right. that you have the opportunity to fill the P-traps, uh, things like that, so that um, that's not an issue. If you did hire our contractor to do the remaining portion, then they may want to use your forage drain or your clean out inside of your house as an access point to do the rest of that work. That that would be up to you. Rick, do you have anything further to add? If there were a set of cameras <coughs> in the instances in both pro previous projects where the contractor did access to the home, that they would issue.
issues that have arisen for that particular service, but it was few and far between. And so it is a possibility, but uh, if they find something unlikely. unusual with the pre-televising, uh, you know, uh, work and, and think they need to look at it from the other side or whatever, they might need to get in your house. Yep. So when they do this work, do they do the televising just before they're going to do the robotics and stuff? Well, it's generally a couple weeks. It's generally a week or two ahead of time because we want them. To, we want to review those. They got to measure each liner to the exact length once once they televise it. And so, Rick, is it's a couple weeks ahead of time, or is it usually the same week? It could be two to three weeks yeah. even. It's a separate crew. They come in and they'll clean and televise the lines. The the cleaning we don't. You can still use your sewer yeah. and water when we're cleaning the yeah. pipe. It's just a little. Uh, Yep. A short line that would go in there with a cleaning head on it. Yep. So on something like that, we can do that with virtually no dis disturbance yep. or disruption to your life. Yep. So we wouldn't necessarily notify you for that. Yep. It will notify you when we do the actual lining of your pipe. Yeah, but I'm talking about the fact that if they find an issue, that they now need to come to your house. To Absolutely. Do they leave you a notification? Yep. So the question there was if we do that, we cut roots or we notice that there's some kind of other uh, calamity with your pipe, will there be an additional notification? The answer yeah, is yes. Absolutely. We will seek you out as a homeowner right. if we identify problems that right. we can't fix with our project. We will absolutely come and notify you of that. And what is your typical, typical notification that you guys require when you do the We would, uh, I think as city staff, that we would take it upon ourselves. Uh, I mean, on a street reconstruction, I did that for about 15 years. Uh, I would go up, knock on your door uh, relentlessly throughout the day, the next day, whatever it takes, if I need to leave a, a notice on your door. Um, and in that instance, I've, I've come across where we've actually gone to connect and that person's sewer is completely plugged, plugged roots completely. You can't even shove a, a, a screwdriver into it. So. I need to go talk to you. I can't hook up to your pipe when it's completely boxed. So we'll, we will seek you out and make sure that we make contact one way or another with you um, prior to moving forward with anything that we would do on our project. Yep. Uh, every house is different uh, depending on the materials. If you have, typically most homes have cast iron pipe from your floor drains to the outside wall. That is extremely common. From there, that material changes. Uh, there were eras where they were saving steel and cast iron for tanks and planes and bombs. So they used orange berg or uh, vitrified clay pipe. The VCP of vitrified clay is six something mm -hmm. inches. Um, PVC, du uh, ductile, cast are typically four inch. So four to six inches is typical coming out of right. a single family residential house. I see hands over here. We are not. So Davis Court, those, those uh, mains are actually PVC and were installed. I, I, I don't want to give you the exact date. I could, I could look it up here in a minute. Uh, so we have no need in, in doing that. With the main being PVC, the connections likely should be PVC as well coming out of that main because that it, once we started using PVC, that was kind of an industry standard already at that point. So your home probably should also have PVC or a, a similar material. So um, I guess that's one of those that at this time we wouldn't until we start realizing maybe problems in our main and if we were to do improvements uh, to the street over the top where maybe we're not doing the main and we've identified some minor issues, then we may come in. So that's not something that we've identified. Uh, if you're on Davis Court, you're not affected. Nope. But for nope. any means on your sewer, nope. your water, that you'll just have to avoid a couple of trucks on Shockby or on 10th Ave or Shockby Avenue, 11th, whatever you're driving. Yep. So, the, in the initial review, when they're initially televising, are they coming to you? Are they only going that side to you, or are they going further yep. to see the condition of what our pipes are? They may not be doing that, but speaking of, if they will have a... 
they're they're generally only going to go the five feet. They might go a few feet past that, you know, just uh, just as they go up. But they're not going to go the whole way. That is not. That they're just going to do the the five to the five seven feet, whatever. We give them the dimension that they're going from the main to the right of way because it varies from house to house. So in our bid documents, they know exactly it might be 28 feet for one house. It might be 32 feet to get to that five foot area. And so they know exactly how far they go. So they, they might go a couple feet past it just as, as they go on up, but they're not going to go all the way. No. Their robotic equipment has yep. measuring devices right on it. So they yep. know the exact footage that they're going yeah. to. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Room of quiet people. Any other questions, <laughs> concerns? No cost to you. No cost. <laughs> this, uh, this you point. get. You'll have a brand new sewer pipe under the roadway and under the boulevard. Uh, should be painless. You guys won't even know what's going on. You'll you'll go to work and you come home and it's done. Uh, just a reminder: we Except do have the samples up front here too. Yeah. If you want to take a look at these, ask any other further questions. Feel free. Uh, we do appreciate. I know everybody's time is important, so we appreciate you guys coming.